the outstanding like we don't do a lot of california stuff here because i'm very selective about it but there's a battleship cabernet for me from the north coast uh called ramsey that i buy in every single vintage this is kent rasmussen's second label uh, he started this for restaurants 15 years ago 12 years ago and they wouldn't let him stop so it's basically the junior varsity from uh, his vineyards, from the Rasmussen vineyards. And it's one of those rare California cabs that actually tastes like a North Coast cab uh, for 20 around 20 bucks and under. That's really outstanding. That has been going in the boxes as well. Um, what else? Oh yeah, this is gonna go in the boxes this week too. This is a wonderful red from Bucci. So Bucci is a, the producer of the wonderful Verdicchio we've been making, uh, making, that we've been selling the last couple of weeks. In fact, we've sold probably upwards of 30 cases of the Bucci Verdicchio. That's the wine that is usually too expensive for me to stock in the store because um, wine's from the Marquette pushing $30 on the, on the eastern side of Italy, in this area, are kind of a hard sell and, unless you can really get these in people's glasses first. Um, and then they're convinced because this is, we're talking nothing but quality here. This is a tremendous value. The Bucci Verdicchio uh, was $15, no discounts, just like the Rosé. And um, this wine is going to be the same thing, $15, no discounts. However, with this, I only have a half of what I had of the Verdicchio. They put this on, the sales sheet just last week and sent, knew how I had been working with the Verdicchio and I jumped all over it. It's the Pongelli, it's the high-end uh, blend of Montepulciano, Sangiovese. Oh my gosh, this is just, this is, so, this is so good. This is a wonderful wine. The wines are super pure, super well made. This is a 2013. So all of that um, rambunctious, youthful, Acidity has integrated fully into the wine. The color is perfect. There's, it's just in a great window right now. Mm. This wine, at this kind of price point, is what I call an everyday pantry wine. There's still really good tannin, and this wine some, you know, cut through fat, proteins, that sort of thing, cheeses. Um, red sauce, tons of fruit, great aromatics, dark berry, um, you know, dark wild tay berry, mm, lovely um, blue fruits coming through there as well, a little bit of balsam. It's a really nice wine for 15 bucks. So it, it may all go through the pandemic box, I'm not sure. If you're interested in this, give me a call or an email and we can uh, sell this outside the pandemic box as well. Um, but it's kind of destined for that. Okay, so what else? Let's see. I, oh, I fit all the highlights except a couple here. Um, this is a sentimental favorite. This is going to shock you all. It's a California Gewürztraminer. I love this variety. And it's generally um, an Alsace that I, I prefer my Gewürztraminer's coming from. However, this is kind of a sentimental favorite to me. Back when I first started going to the Napa Valley and Sonoma in the 80s, uh, Gunlach Bunshu was a favorite. Uh, and Sonoma in those days was a beautiful little town. You could still stay in the Sonoma Inn uh, if you were, you know, um, just a regular person. And wandering the square was always fun. And Gunlach Bunshu was a, a really cool winery. A bunch of hippies down in Dirt Road um, that made really very lovely wines. There was a Zinfandel that used to sell for $4.50 that was absolutely magnificent. One of their best wines was this Dry Gewürztraminer. This wine showed up on a closeout list. I was totally shocked. Um, and every year they put this out, this wine gets great reviews and this is no exception and this is the 2018 so it's the current release 
they've marked this down from 2895 to 2195 oh man that's just a rinse but i gotta tell you i wish you could smell this wine this is classic gewurz now the thing about this variety is if it's done poorly it's one of the most hideous wines in the world um, it tends to get this bitterness if you're not careful with it and it can uh, really get high in alcohol which can throw just skew the aromatics um, the wrong way completely this wine mm. it's got that classic rose hips um, exotic passion fruit uh, star fruit just, uh, just all those aromatics that you love about this sweet lime flower that, that is textbook diverse and it's dry but it's rich that's the thing this is such a versatile food line and right now totally dry finish really good acidity um, this is like the ideal Thai food wine uh, or um, anything that Asian cuisine, Asian fusion, that sort of thing, or really just sitting out on the deck drinking this on a nice evening like tonight will be um, slightly chilled. If you're afraid of Gewurz demeanor, this is, would probably be a really good place to, to dive in because this one is, is really done so wonderfully. Um, okay, so that's most of what we have today. I do want to mention a couple of things um, along with the sort of more everyday things that we got in this list, I received uh, a, a, a stunning offering. And, and, you know, I wouldn't be a wine shop worth my weight uh, if I didn't have the high end as well as the low end and everything in between. So I really feel compelled to mention this incredible uh, wine from Bruno Jacosa, which is on a closeout deal. I'm always delighted when I can find something of this incredible quality. I'm Jacosa, and, and if you don't know, is one of the handful of top winemakers in the world. He died a few years ago. Um, this is his 2011. Uh, he first bottled the Barbaresco from this vineyard, uh, Santa Stefano, uh, in 1964. In fact, he said that this wine, the, the 1964, even after all the accolades he received in his entire career, all of his life, he became a superstar. Um, he said the 64 of Santa Stefano was the one that he really remember most fondly. Um, the 2011, historically, it's a historic wine. There is no more of this wine that's going to be made. All of the wines from Jacosa now, the estate's now run by his daughter, Bruna, um, are going to be estate bottled. This was a long-term contract with the Castella di Santa Stefano, um, which was a monopole. He got all the fruit from this. And this was the last bottling of this wine. And Bruno Jacosa was such a perfectionist that you will not find verticals of certain wines because in certain years he just did not make them. Um, so we're talking Nebbiolo from uh, Barbaresco and a single vineyard of Note 2011 was a really, really good vintage. Now, I know this is going to sound like, um, you know, something that's really a reach for a lot of people, but you can find this wine for 150 to uh, $200 online. I love it when I meet these big corporate online people that are, I can offer something uh, a lot less than they can. Um, for a limited time, I only have four six packs of this. Uh, this wine is 120 bucks, which I know it sounds a lot for a lot of people, but I mean, these wines are doing nothing but go, going up on the auction block. If you look at auction right now, uh, this is one of the hottest producers there is. Uh, he, he died. There's no more of his wines that are going to be made. So um, avail yourself of this if you want to. Not just for the auction value, but if you ever want to have a truly great Piedmont wine from a master, this is a way to get into one of those. His other bottlings all start at 250 and you'll see his red label reserve of Barolo and Barbarescos for thousands of dollars, literally thousands of dollars. So Bruno Jacosa, let me know if you want one or two of these. Um, I also got an offer for a really great deal at Ornelia, which is the Super Tuscan um, from Bulgari, which every single year is one of the highest rated wines coming out of Italy. 
This is a wine that was made to emulate the first growths of Bordeaux. Uh, the Frescobaldi family from Tuscany, it's all their money, and it's a top-rate, top-run organization. The 2015, I mean, if you look at the, the um, ratings of this wine, you'll, they're basically 100 points to 97 in between, somewhere in between, by everyone. I was, I was stunned to see the 2015 even uh, on a closeout list. You'll see this wine, the cheapest I think I saw it online was um, $209 or 210 bucks. And for a limited time, we're selling it for 195 bucks. That's a great deal. And I only have three six packs of that. So anyway, I know those aren't for everyone, but I felt I needed to mention those. But this is only a smattering of what we have this week. I mean, these are great wines. Remember the um, Chablis from last week, the Defay, uh, Cote de Leche Reserve, the 2015. I got that back in. I know a lot of you special ordered that. Um, the the Capolin uh, Calfondo, Prosecco is coming back in tomorrow. There's several wines coming back in tomorrow. There's a great Cote de Rome coming in tomorrow that I've been trying to get back into the shop uh, for a while. So we got the Muscadet. I think that's it. Okay. Um, email, phone call. We're doing pickup times on Friday, four to five, and Saturday noon to uh, I'm sorry, eleven to noon on Saturday. Uh, the farmers market is out front. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. You call us in advance. You order a pandemic box or whatever you want. We'll special order anything. We'll put together any number of these things for you. Uh, we'll charge you over the phone. The wine will be in the uh, hallway waiting for you on Friday or Saturday every week. And that way we can have a contactless uh, handoff of the wines. I should mention too, there is a little bit more of the Bucci Verdicchio, if anybody wants that. And um, I think that's it. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope you have a good week. Hope we hear from you. Um, Steve at AuthenticWines.com, 541-485-0336. Thank you.